I'd like to pretend that I am gallantly putting my precious reading at risk for the sake of the greater bookish public. But the truth is, this is the fifth time I've done this experiment. It's always an excellent reading experience. At the halfway point of the year, lots of booktubers release various videos checking in, revealing their favourite books of the year thus far. I've searched through some of my favourite creators' videos and identified five books from six wonderful booktubers. So I'm excited to introduce you to six of my favourite booktubers and the five books that they recommended. Hell of a Book by Jason Mott recommended by Sam from Paper Not Books. Sam has this wonderfully playful taste in literature. It's sometimes speculative, sometimes literary, often both, and always funny. She likes authors such as Catherine Valente and Kurt Vonnegut, and they're two authors of which we agree. Sam's videos are much like her taste in books. She has a quirky, fun feel to her content, but she delivers intelligent and insightful reviews. And she has far too few subscribers for the quality of video she creates. So please check her out. I've seen Hell of a Book around, but I don't really know much about it. I think it might be satirical, but that might be because Sam recommends it. The Wanda by Emma Donoghue. Recommended by Melissa at Fully Booked. Melissa enjoys quite a broad taste in books, which include classics, contemporary, non-fiction, fantasy, sci-fi, dystopian, thriller, translated, literary. See, I, I said broad. Melissa's videos give off a cosy, comfy vibe, and she has possibly the best series Booktube has ever seen, where she tries to guess the plot of a basic book based on what pop culture has taught her about the book. And then she vlogs reading the book. Sometimes she's right, sometimes she's not. It's always entertaining. Emma Donoghue is one of those authors that has been on my agenda for a while, but I've never quite gotten around to, so it's great to finally have an excuse to actually prioritise her. Companion Piece by Ali Smith, recommended by Lindy Magpie Reads. Lindy is another booktuber with broad taste in books. She is also a librarian, which automatically means she is awesome, punk and will probably survive the apocalypse. Seriously, you need a librarian on your team if zombies attack. She's one of those booktubers who when they review a book, they're so good at considering what the book is trying to do and rating the book on whether it was successful at that or not. I really admire booktubers who can do that. As personally, I'm all about whether the book worked for me, which basically means it can do one of three things. Lindy is currently doing a Shadow Giller project, which I'm very excited for. I'm going to read some of the Giller Prize long list. But there's a few books which I'm not sure about, and I'm just waiting for Lindy's review on those books before I make a decision. Before I talk about my impressions of Ali Smith, it's worth noting that I said six booktubers, but only five books. That's because Companion Piece by Ali Smith was also recommended by Roz at Scally Dandling about the books. Roz, much like Lindy, is another booktuber who is very capable of enjoying a book for what it is trying to do and not what she would like the book to do. She loves classics and has this wonderful series where she scally dandles over to lesser known countries and reviews a book from there. She is one of Booktube's absolute most intelligent cookies. Ali Smith is an author for me quite like Emma Donoghue in that I've always meant to try them, but have never somehow gotten around to it. But of course that's all going to change now that two of Booktube's finest recommend her. I know this book is written as part of her seasonal quartet, Autumn, Winter, Spring, Summer. So I guess this makes it a quintet now. I've often been confused by that series. How do you make an entire book about a season? But I guess I'll find that out. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. Recommended by Shelley Swearingen. Shelley makes some of the best content on Booktube. I admire her ability to make very polished content without having content that feels over scripted. Unlike some channels I could mention. Wait, what's, what's that supposed to mean? Who scripts his stuff anyway? Shelley is also a librarian, and as we've already discussed, that means she's punk and she'll survive the apocalypse. She reads mostly literary, contemporary, classic, non-fiction, historical, and children's literature, but just has a wonderful general knowledge of books and is so joyfully 
excited when discussing them. However, we have very different tastes in books. It's kind of comical how often we disagree. Virginia Woolf is of course a writer which I think we're all familiar with. However, I've never gotten along with her. I once had a car accident while listening to an audiobook of Orlando and that seems to sum up my opinion of Virginia Woolf. So you may be asking yourself, Scott, if Shelley has a different taste in books to you and you already know you don't like Virginia Woolf, why are you reading A Room of One's Own? And to that I'd like to say, who scripts this stuff anyway? The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett, recommended by Emma of Drinking By My Shelf. Emma is a booktube superstar who combines insightful commentary about the novel she reads with her personal experience and a desire to spend as much time as practically possible being silly or laughing. She makes excellent vlogs where she goes to Italy, drinks, laughs, sees pretty things, eats great food, and reads good books. And I'm not at all jealous. I am completely jealous. Emma reads a combination of contemporary thriller, literary, and lots of LGBT stuff. In Emma's video, she named her seven best books of the year thus far. I had already read four of them, and each one of them was either a four or a five star read. So her recommendations are actually pretty good. So that bodes well for The Twyford Code. And this is a book I've seen around the place and I would like to read, but I'll be honest with you. It was probably going to be a book that I made a lot of promises to, but never followed through. So now I get to read it. There are all the books I'm going to read and snap. Yeah, okay, I'm still here. I've actually already read the books and I'm just filming this in one take. So let's go through the books in the order that I enjoyed them least to most. Companion Piece by Ali Smith. This is a very playfully written novel. You can tell Smith just loves words. Words that rhyme. Words with two meaning. And parts of this book are written in poetry with really, really long lines. And if that is your type of thing, I can see this being a real delight. However, I am not that kind of reader. I enjoy pretty writing when it adds to an otherwise strong novel. But I wanted plot. I wanted characters. I wanted themes. This book actually has all of those things, but they're not very strong. And I have deemed it unnecessary to discuss those aspects of this Joyce-esque novel. That's actually really unfair. This novel is much better than anything James Joyce wrote. I can objectively see that this is a wonderful novel which a lot of readers, especially readers who love wordplay and language would enjoy. But it's not a personally wonderful novel and I gave it two stars. The Twyford Code, Janet Hallett. Edith Twyford wrote escapist children's literature for a generation that was affected by the war. Her Super Six novels were especially popular. To the modern reader, she was uncomfortably racist and sexist. She is, of course, Enid Blyton. What if Enid Blyton was a spy and included a secret code in her novel which revealed the location of a hidden treasure? The novel is told in a voice transcript found on an old phone. The voice recognition software is, well, voice recognition software, so must have has become mustard. Steve Smith is just out of jail and he is curious about an event that happened to him when he was young. A teacher, Miss Isles, or Miss Isles in the transcript, confiscated his copy of a Super 6 novel, then took the class on an outing to Bournemouth to see Edith Twyford's house. She then went missing, and nobody can remember how they got home that evening. Smith hunts down some of his old school friends, and they try to track down Miss Isles by cracking the Twyford code. This mystery novel has quite a gripping plot, and it felt very in the spirit of Enid Blyton, despite it clearly being an adult novel. I was all in for the ride and invested until the end. A very enjoyable novel, which I recommend. If I am to critique this book, it is that the book was slightly too long and could have maybe lost 100 pages, which would have made it flow much nicer and kept the pace up, which is what you want for this type of book. I gave The Twyford Code four stars. Hell of a book by Jason Mott. If you like Kurt Vonnegut, read this novel. There are two characters in this book. An author who has just written a novel called Hell of a Book. That's that novel. Uh, that novel. Who scripts this stuff? The second character is a boy called Sooty. That's a derogatory nickname based on the colour of his skin. His parents are trying to teach him a superpower. How to 
disappear. One day our unknown author, who is definitely not Jason Mott, starts seeing an unknown little kid who has been murdered, perhaps by the police. We don't know whether this kid is sooty or not. This book really felt like Mott wasn't sure whether he's writing comedy, sci-fi, an autobiography, satire, literary fiction, and that's kind of the charm of it. It's completely weird and bizarre. You never know what's going to happen next, yet it doesn't feel random. It's a wild ride that is thought-provoking and tackles some really big issues around race. There is a fantastic scene where the author looks at his hands and says, I'm black. Who would have thought it? I never noticed. This is the book I wanted Percival Everett's The Trees to be. Great book, four stars. A Room of One's Own, Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is answering the question, why aren't there more great women writers? Written in 1928, I was really wondering how relevant it would be. After all, there are so many great women writers now. I was still expecting it to be historically interesting, and that's definitely true. But Wolf has written something timeless and something intersectional. Wolf is discussing the systems of oppression women of the time face. Those systems have not left us. They are still in action. It's just that sometimes they're not always gendered. Wolf's appreciation for the social advantages money buys is first rate. My favourite bit of this book, however, was when Wolf is discussing the four great women authors of the last hundred years. Jane Austen, Charlotte Bronte, Emily Bronte, and George Eliot. Wolf's insight into these women's writing was, well, excellent. Exactly what you would hope a master writer would have. Emily Bronte would have made a great playwright. George Eliot could have chronicled history. These were women of diverse skill who for the most part just stuck to prose. Why was that? It is fascinating to get Wolf's perspective on the questions that she is raising. I have but one criticism of this book, and it's a very modern criticism. Wolf doesn't cite her sources. We don't know if she is making this up or if she has researched it. Her points are still very well argued. But am I persuaded by Wolf's writing, or are they well reasoned? Four stars. The Wanda by Emma Donoghue. A girl isn't eating or drinking, yet she lives. A nurse is hired to watch her and find out if it's true or a hoax. It sounds simple. We have a mystery. Is the girl eating or not? Is it supernatural or trickery? But Donoghue decides to build the characters. The nurse has a past. The girl has a dead brother. And the parents just don't seem right. But you cannot quite put your finger on what is wrong with them. Donahue has really drawn the characters well, which is impressive because the book has a strong plot. I love how the plot and characters were so finely balanced, so neither one dominated the other. Then there were some really interesting themes as well. Religion, faith, Catholicism versus Protestants, poverty, the way families love each other, abortion, adoption, lost love. It is a very complex book. However, ultimately... This is just a real page turner with perfect pacing. You want to know what's going on with this girl and whether she's eating food or not. And every time you think you might know the answer, Donahue twists, turns and proves your guesses wrong. And by the time you finally start to get an idea of what might be going on, Donahue has maneuvered some pretty big balls into motion that you just want to keep going. This is a moorishly enjoyable book which I had a great time reading. The writing is great. The setting is eerie. I really have nothing bad to say about this novel. This book defines five-star read. Well, that's it. If you've done the maths as this has gone on, that is an average rating of 3.8 stars. My usual average is 3.1 stars. So we see what we have always seen. Booktubers are a reliable source for good recommendations of books. But there's a twist. That wasn't the whole experiment. These were all books that I had rejected in the last 12 months, but reconsidered because of some strong booktuber recommendations. That's right. I handicapped the booktubers. I made it hard for them and they still won. So what can we observe from this? I think we can observe that these are six brilliant booktubers and you should be subscribed to all of them. Do you have a book you think I'll like? Recommend it to me in the comments section and I might read it for a similar project I'm planning on reading later this year. 
remember to hit that like and subscribe button and turn the lights off on your way out. What does that mean? Who scripts this stuff anyway?